You're working on a new Java application and you realize that you need to make an HTTP request from your app to a REST API. You're not quite sure where to start, so you begin by heading over to Google and doing a quick search. There are some really great results here, but as you start to dig through them, some of them can be a little confusing and some of them can be a little bit out of date. So you're not sure what to do. So let's go ahead and try another search. Again, a little out of date and you're not quite sure what is the current best practice for doing this. Well, in this tutorial, I'm gonna show you and we'll do it right after this. What's up friends, Dan here, and today we're gonna to take a look at the HTTP client in Java. Now, the HTTP client was added in Java 11, so you're gonna to need to be running at least Java 11, and it can be used to send a request to resources over a network. It supports HTTP 1 and 2, uh, both synchronous and asynchronous programming models, handles request and response bodies as active reactive streams, and follows the familiar builder pattern. So I'm excited to go through this today. Now, one of the caveats, as I said, is this was added in Java 11. So if you're still running something like Java 8, you'll need to upgrade. And I know there's been a lot of hesitation for me moving people off of Java 8. And I get it, it can be a little scary, but if you get the facts straight, and realize that there are other ways to uh, get Java without having to pay for it. There's a whole bunch of really great features in the Java language, and this you don't have to rely on all of these tutorials and articles that you see across the internet that are using really outdated code to perform some of these tasks. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull up Terminal here. I'm actually running Java 13, but again, I'm running the Adopt Open JDK. So I would advise going out there and look at the different vendors that you can get Java from. So I'm using Adopt Open JDK, and that is free to build and free to use in production. Uh, so that's really great to see. So if you have any questions about Java's licensing, I know there's a lot of questions around that, and should I move off of eight? Uh, 11 is the current long-term support, and I'd love to answer those questions. So uh, please leave me some comments below if you're afraid to move off of Java 8, maybe if you just have some questions. But with that, we're going to move on to the tutorial again today. You're going to need at least Java 11 to work with the HTTP client. As always, anything that we discuss will be linked in the description below. So if you don't want to have to follow along and you just kind of want to watch, Go for that. Uh, I will have a link to my GitHub account and the repository with all of the code that we discussed today. With that, I think the easiest way is going to be to jump into a new project and just work through this. So I'm gonna be using IntelliJ. You can use whatever IDE you want, whatever text editor. This can be done anywhere that uh, you write Java code. So what I'm gonna do is actually create a new project and what we're gonna end up doing is creating a Maven project. So the reason behind that is we could do this in just a normal single Java application. We could actually pull up the Java 9 REPL if we wanted to. But what I wanna do is actually make this a little bit more useful. So we're gonna make a request out to a public REST client. We're going to get some data back and we're gonna get that back as JSON. So that would be returned to us as a string. But then what I wanna do is bring in Jackson and see how we can take that JSON and parse them into Java objects. So for that, I'm gonna use Maven because then I can just declare Jackson as a dependency and use it in my project. So I'm gonna go ahead and use an archetype and we're just going to use a Maven quick start. So let's find the quick start, there it is. I'm gonna say next, uh, we're gonna call this hello, HTTP client. And if we look at our external libraries here, we have JUnit, so I could tell um, we are importing the dependencies that we need. All right, so the first thing that I wanna do is I wanna update this palm.xml. This is kind of just what you get when you use the um, quick 
the quick start archetype. So I'm going to go ahead and clean this up. I am going to remove that. I don't need it. I actually want Java 13 is what I'm running. Again, if you're just on 11, that's fine. If you're on 14, great. Just make sure that kind of matches what you're using. And I actually don't need any of the build, so I'm going to get rid of that. Uh, also, if you want to, if you want to go into file and project structure, you can just make sure that you're using the correct SDK and the project language level. Again, uh, whatever IDE you're using, just kind of make sure that those settings are correct. Great. So what I'm going to do now is go into my app. And again, this is the archetype and me not having my formatting settings correct, but I'm just going to clean this up real quick and we will get going. So the first thing that we want to do is we want to get an instance of the HTTP client. So let's take a look at HTTP client. We're going to import that so that I can jump in to the source. Okay. So an HTTP client can be used to send an HTTP request and, re and retrieve their HTTP responses. Um, it's created using this HTTP client new builder. So there's a static method called new builder. And there's also a static method called new HTTP client. So if we were to look at this, we have this new HTTP client, which essentially just returns a new builder.build. So when you create an instance of an HTTP client, you need to set a bunch of defaults, or you don't need to set a bunch of defaults if you don't need them. But the HTTP client, when you're creating it, when you're using that new builder.build, you're setting a bunch of properties. And so there are things like um, proxy selector, SSL connect. Uh, I don't know all of them in here, but you can look through here. So there's like proxy selector, cookie handler. What do you want to use HTTP one or two? You know, those kind of things at, a, at a, a low level, like what do you need to configure? So we don't want, we don't really care about that. So what we can use is we can actually use this new HTTP client, which will return a new builder and have some defaults set up for us. So that's our first step. We're going to say client is equal to uh, HTTP client dot new HTTP, whoops, new HTTP client. Okay, so that's the first step. Next, we need to configure a request that we're going to go ahead and send um, using the HTTP client. So what I want to do is come in here and say HTTP request, call this a request, and HTTP request dot new builder. So we're going to use a builder. The first thing that we're going to configure is we're going to say this is a get request. We are going to pass a header. We are going to say that I want to accept uh, application slash JSON, even though that's what that service is going to give us back anyway. Then we need to provide a URI. So I'm going to stop there for a second and actually come up here. I'm going to create a private static final string, and we'll call this posts API URL, and we need to set that. So let me go ahead and bring up my browser again. And this is the API that we're going to hit. This is JSON placeholder, just a public REST API out there that really gives you some fake data that you can manipulate right away. So when you hit slash post, you get all of them. If you were to hit slash post slash one, you would get this one. You can perform post requests, put, delete, et cetera. So uh, just a nice fake REST API that we can work with. So I'm going to head back here and I'm going to paste that in there. And that's going to be my URL, um, which is a string. So to get a, to pass in a string, um, our URL string, we're going to use uri.create, which takes a string. And so then we can use our posts API URL. And finally, we're going to put this all together and call build. All right, so now that you have a request, we're going to use the HTTP client to go ahead and send that request off. So we can say client.send, and as you will see, there are a few methods in here. So if you want to go ahead and send a request synchronously, you just use the send method. 
If you wanted to do this asynchronously, you can use one of the async methods. So we're actually just gonna send this uh, synchronously. So if you wanna jump into the documentation, you can see that it takes a couple of arguments here. So it's gonna take the HTTP request, which we've already used the builder to go ahead and build a request so we can pass that request in. And then you're also gonna see that it takes an HTTP response dot body handler. So the body handler is responsible for determining what is going to be returned in the response body. So there are a bunch of different classes. If you want to go ahead and kind of dig through that, you can. Um, but we're just going to actually return a JSON string, which is really a string. So we're just going to use one that allows us to do that. So we're going to go and come in here and we're going to pass in that request. And then we're going to say body handlers of uh, body handlers of and we're of string so we just want the string and that should give us what we need so next what I'm going to do is actually extract this into a local variable and we'll call this response and that is going to be that is going to return a return type of HTTP response string so that will give us the ability to call response.body and get the string representation of the JSON back. Uh, next, you see some red squigglies here. We just need to uh, add some ex exceptions to the method signature uh, because that does throw an IO exception or an interrupted exception. So from that standpoint, we should be able to come in here and say response.body. And if we were to go ahead and run this, I'm using a keyboard shortcut, and there's our response body. So, so far, so good. All right, so my next course of action is I want to actually parse the JSON into objects. And to do so, we're going to bring in another library. So we're going to head over to our palm.xml. I'm going to go in here and declare a new dependency. And we're going to start typing Jackson. And we're going to get some help here. Jackson data bind. And we are going to... Why did that... Ooh. I was acting a little quirky on me, but all right. So we're gonna save this. And since we have turned on enable auto import, we should be able to look in here and see what we need. All right, so we're good to go there. So what we're gonna use here is something called an object mapper. So I'm gonna say mapper is equal to new object mapper. And if you want to, you can go ahead and dig into the object mapper. Um, really what this is for, it provides functionality for reading and writing JSON either to and or from basic POJOs, plain old Java objects. So that's exactly what we want to do. We want to take the JSON that we, was returned from the REST API and convert them into objects. So we're going to need an object first. And let's head back to the browser. I just want to show you. So we have a post here that contains a ID, a user ID, a title, and a body. So we're going to create an object that represents that. So we're going to come in here and say new Java class, and we'll call this a post. And this is going to be a private int ID, private int user ID, private string title, private string body. So we'll go ahead and generate some getters and setters for these. We will also generate a two string. Probably just want the title. Okay, and we'll save that. And actually, I want that. All right, so we'll save that, come back here, and now what we want to do is we actually want to get a list of those posts, we'll call this post, and the way that we're going to do that is we're going to use the mapper.read value, 
and that read value is going to take in the string first. So that is the response.body. And then it needs to, oops, typo. And then we need to give it, so if we jump into the docs here, um, JSON parser class. So then it needs something called a type reference. And so if you look at type reference here, uh, it's just a generic abstract class used for obtaining full generics type information by subclassing. It must be converted to an implementation, uh, data bind to use, blah, 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 blah. Uh, this type reference will just allow us to use um, this class to to kind of determine to declare what what we're going to want to convert each of these types into. So we're going to say new type reference, and this is going to be a list of posts. Oops, I don't want that. That is literally all I want. So I have a new type reference, which is going to return a list of posts. So that should be all we need. So now what we can do is we can just come in here and we can say posts dot for each and we can use a method reference here. So we'll say system dot out print line. And now what we can do is let's go ahead and run this again. And now you see we get, for each line, we get the ID and the title, which is really what we use to um, override the two string in our post POJO. So that's all there is to it. I uh, just wanted to take a little bit of time here and show you an example of how to use the HTTP client in Java to make a request out to a REST endpoint, and then take the JSON that was returned and use Jackson to go ahead and convert those over to objects. So I hope that you found this tutorial useful. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. Consider subscribing to this channel. And as always, happy coding, friends.